Welcome everyone. Today we've put together another podcast that journeys into an area that has developed a large following in the last few decades. Raymond Moody's book, Life After Life, was published in 1975. It was essentially the beginning of today's growing interest in the subject. Rather than me tease you about it, let's jump right into the conversation. It's always blue Saturday, wherever I all right, so uh, we've got a whole stack of these near-death experiences. We're going to try to unpack them here. And, uh, you know, I, I've always been pretty skeptical about this whole thing. Mm -hmm. But there's so many of these accounts and people go into such detail. It's hard to just write them off as, you know, hallucinations or something like that. Yeah, well, what really gets me is how there's so many common themes. Yeah. You know, it doesn't seem to matter where people come from or what they believe in. Uh -huh. There's something similar about all these experiences. Like they're pointing to something beyond, you know, what we normally think of as reality. OK, so let's start with the classic one, leaving the body. I mean, so many people describe this sensation like floating above themselves. They watch things happening below and they feel detached mm -hmm. from it all. There's this one story where a woman is walking up the stairs and she's watching her legs literally dissolve in front of her. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty surreal. It is. And it kind of makes you question the whole idea that consciousness is stuck inside the brain. I mean, if you can see your body from outside of it, what does that even mean about who you are? I'll admit that's where I start to get skeptical. Yeah. I mean, couldn't it just be the brain, you know, kind of misfiring in its last moments? Mm -hmm. It's trying to make sense of things, even though it's not getting any sensory input. That's possible. But how do you explain the stories where people remember details that they couldn't have known unless their consciousness was actually separate from their body? Like what? Well, there's this case where a man was in a coma and he accurately described a conversation that was happening down the hall, even though he was supposedly unconscious. Huh. OK. I see what you mean. There's definitely something there. And then, of course, there's the whole tunnel of light thing. I mean, I know it's almost a cliche at this point, mm. but people describe this journey towards a super bright light and they often feel incredibly peaceful and loved. You can't just ignore that. Exactly. And it's not just about the visuals either. People talk about the emotional impact of that light as something that changes them completely. There was this surgeon who was clinically dead for a few minutes, and he said it was like being surrounded by this intense love that was almost too much to handle. So are we talking about some kind of universal energy field here? Some yeah. Some cosmic welcome committee. Where is this light even coming from? That's where things get really interesting. If we move beyond those traditional materialist explanations, we have to think about the possibility of other realms or dimensions that we can't normally perceive. Maybe this light is like a doorway, a transition between different states of being. OK, I'm trying to keep an open mind here, but that's a little too far out for me. Yeah. And what about all those beings of light that people encounter? They radiate love and acceptance and offer comfort and guidance. Are those angels? Yeah. Spirit guides. The names we give them aren't as important as the qualities they represent. Wisdom, compassion, and unconditional love. It's as if they're a higher form of consciousness, something we can connect with when we shed those earthly limitations. Well, wouldn't it be simpler to say that these figures are just projections of our own subconscious? Yeah. You know, we're facing death, so our minds create comforting images to make us feel better. I guess that's possible, but how do you explain the lasting impact these encounters have on people? There's this story about a woman who always struggled with self-worth. And she describes being embraced by a being of light who tells her, you are my child, welcome home. You are loved beyond all measure. This experience totally changed how she saw herself. She felt a deep sense of inner peace and acceptance that she'd never known before. So you're saying that even if these beings are just segments of our imagination, the psychological effect can still be really powerful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But what if they're more than just projections? What if they represent a connection to a realm of consciousness that's beyond anything we can currently understand? A realm where love and acceptance aren't just ideas, but fundamental principles of reality. I'll admit, that's pretty radical. But if we're going to really explore these NDEs, we have to be willing to challenge what we think we know right. Exactly. And that leads us to another really interesting thing that people describe. They talk about gaining profound knowledge or understanding during these experiences. It's not like learning facts from a book. It's more like suddenly grasping universal truths that our normal ways of knowing can't really explain. Yeah, I've heard people say it's like they became knowledge, like they merged with some kind of universal consciousness. How do you even begin to make sense of something like that? 
It really pushes the limits of how we understand the world with our linear language-based thinking. Imagine a place where knowledge isn't broken up into pieces or steps, where time doesn't exist the way we know it. Maybe in that state, we can access information directly and intuitively. We're free from the limitations of our earthly minds. That's a lot to take in. And believe me, my inner skeptic is already gearing up for a rebuttal. But before we go there, I think it's time to move on to another really interesting part of these NDEs, the life review. Yeah, the part where things get a little less warm and fuzzy. Exactly. It's not all tunnels of light and loving beings, is it? There are these stories where people describe reliving their lives, seeing every action, every choice play out in front of them, and feeling the impact those choices had on others, good or bad. It's like facing your demons. It's interesting, though, how the focus isn't on punishment or some external judgment. It's more about self-awareness understanding how our actions affect everything around us, and coming to terms with the consequences of our choices. Yeah, there's one story that really gets to me. This man describes feeling all the pain he had caused others, not just physical pain, but emotional pain too. It's like he absorbed all that negativity, all that suffering, and experienced it as his own. It speaks to how interconnected everything really is, doesn't it? We might think our actions are isolated, but they actually create ripples that extend far beyond ourselves. And in a life review, we're forced to confront those ripples to see ourselves as part of a vast web of relationships. That's a powerful image. And it raises so many questions about morality, accountability, the purpose of our actions. But I'm getting the signal that we're about out of time for this segment. Where does that leave us? Well, I think we've at least established that there's more to these near-death experiences than just neurological quirks or wishful thinking, the recurring themes, the life-changing effects, the way they challenge our usual understanding of reality, it all suggests something deeper, something worth exploring further. We've only just scratched the surface here. There's so <laughs> much more to uncover. What do these experiences tell us about consciousness, about the possibility of an afterlife, mm. about the meaning and purpose of life itself? Those are the big questions, aren't they? And while we might not find definite answers, just the journey of exploring these mysteries is a profound and transformative experience in itself. Stay with us. When we come back, we're going to dive even deeper into these fascinating accounts and see where they lead us. You know, we were talking about the life review before and how intense it can be. Right. It really makes you wonder what's the point of it all, you know? Mm -hmm. Is it like some kind of cosmic judgment day or something? That's what I always thought. But the more I look at these accounts, it seems less about punishment and more about understanding. Like there's this story about a woman who sees all the kind things she ever did and she actually feels the joy that she brought to others as if it were her own. It's like a feedback loop, isn't it? Yeah. It shows us the true impact of what we do, the energy we put out into the world, and that goes for the good and the bad. Which brings us back to that idea of interconnectedness. That seems to be a big theme in a lot of these NDEs, like they're seeing the world as this massive web where every action, every thought has a ripple effect. It's like imagine dropping a pebble into a pond. Yeah. The ripples spread out and affect the whole surface. Our actions, our intentions, they create ripples in the fabric of reality. Okay, so I'm with you so far. But if we're all connected like that, does that mean we're responsible for what other people do too? I mean, that seems like a lot to handle. It's not about blame or carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. It's about understanding that we're all part of something bigger than ourselves. Okay. Our choices have consequences, not just for us, but for everyone. So are we talking about karma here? Maybe. A lot of people who've had NDEs describe this sense of universal balance. Like there's some kind of cosmic accounting going on where every action has a reaction, not necessarily as punishment, but as a natural law of the universe. That reminds me of those stories about people who come back from an NDE with this whole new sense of purpose. <laughs> like there was this one guy who was a total cynic before his experience, mm -hmm. but he came back with this overwhelming feeling of compassion. Mm -hmm. And he ended up dedicating his life to helping people experiencing homelessness. He said he finally understood what empathy really meant, to see the world through someone else's eyes. It's as if these experiences smash through that illusion that we're all separate. They get a glimpse of a reality where love and connection and compassion aren't just nice ideas, but actual forces that shape our existence. So let's shift gears for a second. We've been talking about leaving the body, the tunnel of light, beings of light, all that knowledge in the life review. But there's one part we haven't really touched on yet, the return. And some of these accounts are just wild. People talk about being pulled back into their bodies, often against their will, like they're leaving paradise to come back to this 
limited mundane existence. It's almost like waking up from a really vivid dream. Yeah. But knowing deep down that the dream was more real than your actual life. And yet they come back different. Their values have changed. Their priorities have shifted. They talk about appreciating the simple things more, valuing relationships more living with a purpose they never felt before. It's like they've been shown what's behind the curtain, a sneak peek at what reality truly is. And even though they have to come back to the limitations of their physical bodies, they can't forget what they experienced, that knowledge of what lies beyond. It makes you think though, why come back at all? If that other side is so peaceful, so full of love and understanding, why wouldn't you just want to stay there? That's a question a lot of people who have had NDEs struggle with. Some of them say they were told it wasn't their time yet, that they had things they still needed to do here, lessons to learn or contributions to make. So it's not just about their own growth then. It's like there's a collective purpose involved. Yeah. A mission to bring back the wisdom and knowledge from that other side and share it with the world. Right. And that's what gets really interesting. What if these NDEs aren't just individual experiences? What if they're actually part of something much bigger, some kind of evolutionary process for all of humanity, a way for us to expand our consciousness to awaken to a greater reality? Okay, now you're pushing it. Are you saying these near-death experiences are like orchestrated, designed well, to nudge us all towards some kind of collective awakening? It's a fascinating idea, isn't it? And as far-fetched as it might seem, you can't deny the impact these experiences have on people and how that ripples out and affects the world around them. I've got to admit, there's a part of me that wants to believe that. That there's some grand plan, some purpose to it all, even in the face of death. But then the skeptic in me says, hold on, isn't that just wishful thinking? Maybe. But even if we can't prove or disprove that there's a grand plan, just thinking about these possibilities can be really powerful, it can lead to personal growth and transformation. So where does that leave us then? After exploring all these incredible stories, after wrestling with all these mysteries, where do we land? I think we land in a place of wonder, mm -hmm. a place where we recognize that there's so much we don't understand about reality. These NDEs, they challenge everything we think we know. They push us beyond the limits of our current understanding and invite us to explore those uncharted territories of consciousness and existence. And maybe just maybe that's the whole point. To remind us that there's more to life and to death than we can see, that the universe is full of mysteries that we can't even fathom. And that our journey of exploration is just beginning. You know, we've gone through all these amazing NDE stories, all these glimpses into what might be out there beyond what we normally experience. And the thing that really sticks with me is how transformative these experiences are. Mm -hmm. It's not just about seeing lights or feeling peaceful. Mm -hmm people come back completely different. Right. They have a whole new perspective on life and death and everything. It's like they've seen the bigger picture, like they've been given a cheat sheet on how to live a more meaningful life. Right. And what's really interesting is that the messages they bring back are so similar no matter what their background is or what they believe in. Okay, so let's talk about some of those messages. We hear a lot about love, forgiveness, and being true to yourself. I mean, it sounds kind of cliche. Yeah. When you hear people actually describe these experiences, it takes on a whole new meaning. It's not just about saying the words. It's about really living those principles in a deep way. There's this story about a woman who was told to live fearlessly during her NDE. Mm. And it wasn't about being reckless or anything. It was about facing her fears, going after what she wanted, and living a life that was true to who she was without letting fear stop her. And that seems to be a common thing. Yeah. The shedding of fear, not just the fear of dying, but the fear of really living, yeah. the fear of what people think, the fear of being vulnerable. It's huh. like they've been to a place where love and acceptance are so strong that fear just disappears. Exactly. And that change in how they see things affects everything in their lives. They don't care as much about what other people think. They focus more on being themselves. Mm -hmm. Their relationships become deeper. Their priorities change. And they find a sense of purpose that's more aligned with who they really are. There's this one story that really got to me. It's about a man who was a total cynic before his NDE. But he came back with this incredible sense of compassion. He ended up dedicating his life to helping people who were experiencing homelessness. 
He said he finally understood what it meant to really empathize with someone, to see the world through their eyes. It's like these experiences break down the walls we build between ourselves and other people. Right. They show us how interconnected we all are. They start to see that everything we do think and are is woven together in this tapestry of shared existence. And that brings us back to that message of love. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the romantic kind of love, but something much bigger. Right. And something that includes everyone, everything. It's like they've tapped into the source of unconditional love that's everywhere. A love that goes beyond our human limits and judgments. It's a love that doesn't require us to be perfect or to earn it or deserve it. It just yeah. is. And when you get a glimpse of that kind of love, it opens up your heart and you see yourself in the world in a whole new way with more clarity and compassion. But here's the question that I keep coming back to. If these NDEs are really glimpses into some higher reality, a place of love and understanding, why do we have to come back? Why not just stay there forever? That's the real mystery, isn't it? Some people who have had NDEs say they were told it wasn't their time yet, that they still had things to do here, lessons to learn, contributions to make. So it's not all about their own personal journey then. Right. It's like there's this bigger purpose, like they have a mission to bring back the wisdom and knowledge from that other side and share it with everyone else. Exactly. And maybe that's why we're so drawn to these stories, why they resonate with us on such a deep level. They offer a glimpse of what might be possible, a reminder that there's more to life than what we see in our everyday lives. I mean, they challenge us to question everything we think we know about reality, to explore what's out there beyond what we can normally perceive, and to embrace the mystery at the heart of it all. Right. And maybe just maybe by listening to these stories, by really thinking about these profound experiences, we can start to change our own perspectives, our own priorities, and create a world that reflects those higher truths. A world where love, compassion, and understanding aren't just ideas, but the principles that guide our lives. We may not have all the answers, but we've got the questions. And maybe those questions that yearning for something more, those glimpses beyond what we normally see, maybe those are the real gifts that these NDE accounts give us. They invite us to go on our own journeys of discovery, to find our own proofs, and to live our lives with a sense of wonder, a sense of purpose, and a deep appreciation for this amazing gift of being alive. It's a journey worth taking. And it's a mystery that will keep unfolding long after we're gone. Remember, like us if you like us, and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when something new is posted. Thanks. Be well and prosper. Wherever I